Hey guys and welcome back to another round of Let's Make Hybrids. Last week we had over 150 submissions for the shark and lizard prompt and for this week we are already rocking out almost 70 for the monster kaiju and your favourite animal prompt. So I'm going to try and be a little bit quick and snappy. So first of all we have this one by Untitled Goose which is a hybrid of King Ghidorah, Godzilla and an Asian water monitor. The monitor appendages include a tail, the arms and the legs and I must say I think it was a very brave choice to have two Ghidorah necks alongside the central Godzilla head I'm guessing. As normally having different lengths of necks and heads on creatures can look a little bit intimidating but I think in this case it really pulled it off especially the great big dorsal spikes I think they look fantastic. And next up we've got an unspecified hybrid by Dropkick Murphy. I'm not sure what the kaiju part of this would be, although it does give me a bit of a Colossus vibe, but I do think that the animal part is axolotl, especially showcasing all the little frilly appendages around the face, and I really like all the cracked texturing along the body. And following Murphy, we have physics with two different submissions. So the first one here is the Cobra Kaiju. It had four sets of extendable jaws to more effectively hatch and kill prey, such as elephants, tigers, and occasionally other kaiju. It has eight false heads, their only purpose being pinning down other kaiju, and every part of its body is venomous. So the idea of having multiple false heads, I gotta say, is really quite fascinating, and Seeing it as almost arm-like advantage is also really quite interesting. And I love the design of just all the xenomorph mouths procuring out of this creature. And for the second submission, we'll say Jawi Kaiju, which <laughs> I gotta say is just a very interesting combination. And next up we have Clear the Sage. They mentioned they don't really have a favourite animal, so they've used a Faranoku for the body and a bunch of different random creature features for the face. Despite not really having like any specific kind of idea in mind for this, I do think the entire design just looks very clean and very solid. It looks really fantastic. I really like the soft appearance of the entire creature. I especially just like all the feathers, almost leaf-like appendages going down the back and towards the base of the tail. It's got a really cool wing design, which around the legs kind of reminds me a little bit of Rathalos in a way. And I also like the very gentle looking face. Next by Capra Sutras 93, we have their version of Cerberus. Use a mythical creature and then added leech elements to the design. Fun fact, the legs and tail are in fact heads of other leeches. The bony armor are made from bones of other animals, since I envision the Cerberus used in an arena like the Triple Strike from Hatchery Dragon Race to the Edge series. Oh, that's really quite interesting. It also kind of reminds me of a bone napper as well in that case. And Cerberus is definitely not a creature I expected to see, but I gotta say that is really, really cool. Leeches as well, it's a very interesting choice. I can definitely imagine it being, you know, the pinnacle of a creature from hell. That's extremely creative, and I especially just like these snake-like heads on the tip of the tail there. And the design of the claws looks very formidable. And next up we have Zik Dragon with their Baragon and Styracosaurus. I just love this. It's just really, really adorable. His face is so happy and so perfect, just very, very well designed. And the way that Zik has combined the two creatures into this cartoony aspect, it just looks perfect. Like, I wouldn't really look at it to think Baragon and Strachosaurus, although I can definitely see the resemblance. It looks like a very solid character design, it looks like his own independent concept, which I have to say is extremely impressive. And next up by Vyanesh, we have the Great White Shark and Cthulhu. Another one I didn't expect to see, but hey, it definitely does technically count. What another fascinating and really cool design. I gotta say, I really like all the... I don't know what you could really call them, like all the little holes around the hips, the arms, the legs, etc. Really does give it like a bit of a creepy abyssal vibe, which is perfect for this. And the black and white colour scheme as well really nails down the whole, again, like very creepy, great white kind of vibe to it. The face is very well crafted and I really like the general distribution of all the tentacles and various other features. And next up by Radziosaur, we have the Ghidorah and Velociraptor. I love all the feather work on this, I especially love around the tail. And I also love all the quills and filaments coming from the back of the head. The cresting looks absolutely beautiful. It's a really gorgeous texture. And now I just really want to see more feathered Ghidorahs. <laughs> Such a cool idea. Next up we have Ender Acrocanthosaurus with a Mind Flayer from Stranger Things and some generic feline. Now I haven't seen what a Mind Flayer looks like, however I'm gonna suspect that the great big Muta-like arm appendages at the front there are part of the Mind Flayer, and I really like how they're positioned, sort of like some very eerie large kind of vestigial wings in a way, which I imagine are great for slashing. I also really like the lighting, and especially the texture on it's got like a very grainy texture, just which really adds to the overall mysteriousness of this creature. The posturing is very creative, and I really like just how the piercing yellow eyes gonna stare out at you. And next up, by physics once again, we have the Incarna Sodius. It stood over 20 feet tall, snacking on rexes and gigas. It roamed the prehistoric volcanic wasteland, causing lava pools with the lava dripping from its mouth. What I really like about this is how the silhouette isn't some, you know, very clean shapes or smooth outlines. Instead, the entire silhouette and the entire outline of this creature is mottled by all these bits of what I can imagine, probably bits of rock or bits of um, exo armor. And it just makes for a much more interesting design to see it be so dynamic and so shifting. And in addition to that, I also just really like the design of the foot. 
And next up, I love a dog, we have the Dodo Snack Kaiju. It'll roam the desert in search of a mate. It was originally a carnivore, but because of the lack of big prey on the desert, it is adapted to absorbing the juice and consuming the flesh from cacti. Usually you can find them by following the trail of cacti, and they're about the size of Rodan. That's really quite cool, imagining a great big massive kaiju feeding from a more floral kind of food source. I guess it makes sense in regards to them not really having enough prey to feed from, but still though, something feeding from cacti, again like I said, this is quite interesting. I really like the whole desert colour palette here, and I especially just like how the tail gradients into a darker colour scheme, and I also really like just a very fluffy cresting around the neck as well. And next up we have Caliber Lights with one fluffy boy, a Nagakuga and a crow. A really fitting pair I must say, and I absolutely love how it looks. Nagakuga I find is usually a very fluffy looking creature if I remember correctly, so seeing it with the feathers instead, it's just really really fitting, I think it's a very nice and elegant combination. And once again as always, I just really like Caliber's technique, shading and definition. And next up by Abyss Arachnus, we have the Lagia Cross, Triceratops, Monster Lizard, Godzilla, Skullcrawler, Gamera and a few more. The Mayasuchos or Liami. The Mayasuchos are a species of giant reptile that have adapted to live in the ocean and they are very harmless and will let schools of fish use them for protection and allow submarines to get close to them. But once you harm them, they will destroy you and if you had their offspring, let's just say they would go through every level of hell just to kill you again. And speaking of their offspring, they are coloured like sharks and don't have the spines. And don't have the spines, tusks or horns and are very playful and have been known to play with rocks and submarines. <laughs> oh, I love the idea of just like having the great big leviathan itself coupled with a little smaller version right next to it. And you can really see the size difference as well as the general texture of the creature or the armor that must have grown, you know, over decades of time. And seeing the submarine well there, it's a really nice touch. What I really like about the Mayasuchus in particular is just all the texturing, all the shading, all the colors. I think Abyss Arachnus does a fantastic job just displaying different textures in regards to different uh, physical feels of the creature, if that makes sense. It looks visually very, very rich, quite bumpy and rocky, I imagine, and overall just beautifully illustrated. And next up by Human Microbe, we have a Kaiju Tortoise. Now, before anyone starts yelling Gamera, can I just say, I like how it doesn't look like Gamera. I mean, yes, it's a giant Kaiju Tortoise, but it looked distinctly different. This one looks quite gentle. I really like the very clean texture on this shell, and I especially like the idea of it carrying mountains. I imagine this being some sort of just a very large world turtle kind of creature, and I think it looks fantastic. And following Microbe, we have Frost Dragon 365 with their Jadora, which is a King Ghidorah and a Jaboa. Now, I will admit the image is very small, so it's a little bit tricky to see what's going on here. But I will just say that I really like the fluffiness around the chest of Ghidorah. I think the wing design looks fantastic. And from what I can see of the faces, they look adorable, the great big beady black eyes. And next up, I dated Chicken85, we have the Kaiju Goose. The wings on this one look absolutely badass, I just love the transition, both in the colorations and in texture. All the eyes going down the neck in all the different colors is a really fascinating idea. The beak of the goose looks absolutely horrific with those great big barbed tongues and I think it's a very effective choice and I just really like the overall texture going on with um, some of the ink, especially around the legs. I'm not sure if maybe that's like some kind of a sparkly gel pen or I'm not really sure but I just, I just really like it. It just adds an extra layer of texture which I think looks really nice. And coming up next we have Cherish with their Thylatine Rodan. What is probably my favourite part about this, aside from the obviously gorgeously looking face, is that they've taken Rodan but it doesn't make anything like Rodan. They've taken the idea of Rodan and turned it into a thylatine, which I think is absolutely fantastic and very original and creative. You can see it's clearly a big larva infused creature, but it's not a pterodactyl this time. It is a thylatine with a few reptilian features, such as, you know, the big wings, the little horns coming from the head there, and of course, you know, the big solar's eyes and the teeth. Oh, it just looks amazing. I really love all the lighting, all the shading, the coloration is fantastic, and the face is just beautifully drawn. And I also just really like the contrast between the creature and the rest of the environment as well. The the coloration just really plays an amazing trick on this. And next up we have Vacuum Cleaner with a unnamed hybrid. I'm gonna guess perhaps some kind of bear, I'm not entirely sure, but I do just love the very large stocky build to this creature. The formidable looking paws at the front there, the great big mane and all the thick bits of fur, and an overall fantastic display of shading and pencil technique. And coming up next we've got Little Theropod with their Spinozilla, which is based on the 1990s Godzilla and the 2020 Spinosaurus. His primary weapon is atomic breath, but he can also use EMP charges from his spines and crest. His spines and crest are also capable of emitting electricity, similar to that of a Tesla coil. Spinozilla also has shorter neuro spines along his tail for more movement, making him a very fast swimmer. His powerful tail is also a great weapon, being able to completely destroy some of the US Navy's largest ships. This is badass. I really love the whole poster looking design to this creature. All of the very thick contrasting colour schemes, especially around the body, the fire emitting on its belly, and of course all the ruined red and black rubble at the bottom there. Colour wise it looks absolutely fantastic. The creature itself looks absolutely badass while it's rearing up and you know doing a bit of a victory roar. 
The design of the tail is stunning and I just really like how they managed to combine Godzilla's dorsal spikes to that of, you know, the general fins and silhouettes of the Spinosaurus. And not to mention the face and the teeth. The teeth are just incredibly detailed. I love how it's got multiple rows of it and how they're all segmented and split apart. It just gives it so much character and the entire thing, as I said, just looks incredibly badass and extremely well done. And next up, we have Savannah Dragon 0221. This one is a combination of a lot of things. The monster is a humor, also known as a bird of paradise, a phoenix like creature that never touches ground. The animal is actually several animals. A few of the pets they've had over the years, including a chicken, two cats, two of which has six toes on their front paws, two dogs, and a leopard gecko. That is a wonderfully personal and very interesting design. Not to mention the constellations on this creature as well just gives me a bit of a. I'm not sure, like, in a way, a bit of a somber idea of, you know, up in heaven, up in space, creatures that passed away, but also the fact that it's, you know, this great big bird of paradise kind of creature, it feels very spiritual in a way. I think this is very personal, I think it's very beautiful looking and very creative. I like the very mute and more calm colour schemes of this one. The black and white kind of give me like a bit of a yin yang feel in conjunction to everything else. And as I said, I just think it's really wonderful. Next up by Physics, we have the Leofine Wiverness, which is a lion wyvern. Really liking the big saber teeth, it's always a personal favourite of mine. And I like how formidable the big spiky ridges going down at the length of the wyvern wing looks. And next up by Frozen, we have a creature they have incorporated into their own dark fantasy world building project, of which he's included a bit of a backstory in the description here. And he said this was partially inspired by the mixing of a catfish, an eel, a crocodile, a bear, and it's partially based on a Czech folklore creature of the same name, which is the Vodnik. I really like the coloration on this, and I also really like the distribution of all the fur, in particular around the arms, I think it's a very interesting touch. The design of its face as well looks really awesome, and I love the very clean and consistent segmenting of the underbelly armour going down the entire length of the creature, and the scale of work as well looks fantastic. And next up we've got two by Hazilla. First of all is King Legidorana. If Smog's wings are a hurricane, then these are a global climate cataclysm. So this is clearly based on King Dora and the Legiana from Much Hunter, and I really love just how well this fits together. It is very elegant, it fits perfectly, the wing design, both in terms of the main segment of the wings around the fingers and also around the base where it connects to the rest of the creature. It just looks very, very clean. The design of the tails as well, again, I love it. I love how he's infused all the spikes along all of the large membrane parts. And the cresting on the head, again, just looks badass. And I also just like how it varies between the three heads as well. It looks incredibly royal, and like I said earlier, it just fits together so fantastically. I think it's extremely effective, and has done a fantastic job doing this. And for has the second submission, he's also included his own design of a kaiju fied Draki. A Draki being that of Draculady's character, which is sort of a very long lizard creature. And <laughs> this, I think, just looks awesome. Again, a really fantastic job of just intertwining all the different features into the base concept, in which case is a Draki, which is normally a very smooth looking creature, this time very armoured and very rich and very spiky and it just again looks really really fantastic and has really knows how to place additional spikes while making it look like it's actually part of the creature not just slapped on really clever and again it looks really badass next up a human microbe we have the kaiju anglerfish really is creepy how this is kind of like staring into the perspective of the viewer especially the great big solar's eyes i think is very effective and i think it will appear to be perhaps eating a submarine or a very small little uh, sea vessel there i really like the overall proportions and variation of the needle-like teeth and the overall just like very shadowy shaded vibe to this drawing really sets the scene very well and next up by Sagatar, we have the Rathalos and Snow Leopards, including a little cameo of a confused hunter and Palico in the background. Now, I must give Sagatar props for having the hybrids biting the tail, which is a thing that the Snow Leopards do very often is carry their tail. I don't know why, but it looks absolutely adorable, and Sagatar's really captured it perfectly here. I, can I just say, I really love the texture of the tail. I think you've seriously nailed that Snow Leopard texture, which is actually really quite challenging, both in terms of the patterning and the fur as well, which kind of redistributes the pattern itself. It looks incredibly soft. I think you've done an absolutely stunning job on that. Not to mention you designed the face as well. It's a really nice kind of in-betweener of a leopard or at least a more mammalian looking design with Rathalos features, especially the big chin, the ears, and the ridged eyebrows. I also really like the coloration of the eyes and the overall scale work on the creature looks phenomenal. And next up we have Maeva with one of their vanilla sport creations. FNN reports that COVID is more destructive than Kaiju. Kaiju unemployment soars. <laughs> Poor Kaiju. I really like the idea here. It's a really cool idea. And as a sport creation, I just want to say that the building that the Kaiju is sitting on looks absolutely fantastic. And it's just, it just looks really solid, really smooth, which again, you know, kind of tricky to do in sport. So mad props for that. 
And I think the design of the kaiju itself just looks really cool, and especially the coloration, I think it's very effective. Next up, we have Guggenheim with their design of Sekhmet, which is a Zenogra, Cobra, Red Towers, a Black Cockatoo, and the King of Saxony, Birds of Paradise. Now, I know a lot of you are probably saying, why is this not the thumbnail? Only reason it's not is because I've already added Guggenheim as so many of the thumbnails. It looks absolutely incredible, but I've had to contain myself this time. This looks absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm a sucker for Egyptian concept anyway, but this looks really incredibly badass. It's like a more modern Egyptian idea, in my opinion. I absolutely love just all the Zenogra features. What is probably my favourite part actually is the very subtle bit of gold that is kind of encroaching through the scales. You can really see it around the shoulder, around the ribcage, the belly, a bit around the knees and the base of the tail. It's incredibly subtle but it just adds, you know, volumes of detail. Really gives the creature so much more texture. And just the overall distribution of parts and especially just the great big mane around the neck and head of the creature just looks absolutely fantastic. The entire thing looks incredibly badass, especially the way it's breaking down on a pyramid is really haunting and fantastic. Plus the sun shining behind the wing in the top right there. And yeah, like I said, the, the whole thing just looks incredible. Absolutely amazing job as always, Guggenheim. Next up we have Capra 93 with their Stegocorn, which is a fusion of the Stegosaurus and the Unicorn, with elements of Long Horse, which is a fictional monster by Trevor Henderson. A Stegosaurus and Unicorn fusion, that is a fascinating idea. We need to see like Stegosaurus just more often in, in creatures, to be honest. It looks really cool. I really like the texturing just around the face. I actually, is that because the face is like an exposed part of the skeleton, in which case it's kind of creepy? But I think that the texture looks pretty good though, and I also just really like the bits of Stegosaurus plating along the back of the creature. Next up by physics, we have the wall talus, which I'm gonna guess is a fatalis and perhaps a wolf. A very large and badass looking creature. I really like the way it's posed and how it's kind of got its claws ready to attack the viewer. Or it is looking large and proud. And I really like the scale work along the face. Something I wish was covering more of the creature, in fact. I think that looks absolutely fantastic. And I also like the serrated blades on the tip of the wings. Next up by Emmy Gamer, we have a kaiju based on the Komodo dragon and Megalania. I really love the varying color schemes of this creature. The orange just really pops out. And I like how it's not just on the neck. It's also a bit around the back leg and the tail as well. It really adds an extra dynamic to the colour scheme and I think it looks really good. I also just love how the rest of the colours are also like a bit of a a very earthy, very rocky kind of colour scheme. I think it looks wonderful and I just really like the contrast. I also really like the scaling, just how segmented the entire creature looks. It gives me the idea of like a very large armoured creature. And I also really like the design of the face. And next up by Moon R, we have a Rhino Kaiju. There's a very concept RT feel to this. I feel like I've seen it before and that's in a good way because it's got like a very distinct badass looking appearance that I can imagine seeing this in a concept art book. I love the overall form to this creature and I also just think that the idea of having a rhinoceros part kind of focus on the very large front legs is a very interesting point and it kind of makes sense as well because if this creature was charging ahead, the first thing you would count is not the head but the arms so it makes sense for the horns to be there instead. The bits of cyan in the eyes and the crackly part of the chest as well is a very interesting touch and the overall proportions of the creature just really kind of gives off a very large goliath feel. I think it looks fantastic. And next up we've got Firegate of Thursday with an unnamed hybrid. Really loving the overall posturing on this one, the way it's kind of turning mid-curve looks fantastic. I also really like the outlining and texture along the tail, the frill and especially the mouth. In fact, the mouth itself, the entire head looks fantastic and very creepy. And I also really like the frills. The entire front portion of the creature just looks very interesting to look at. With a lot of depth and a lot of varying outlines. And next up by Hazilla, we have the Pangoli Sutures Angorasani, which is a pangolin, Capasutures and Inguirus. I probably butchered the name, I apologise. But it's another really, really awesome looking design. A pangolin, Capro, Inguirus. That is a fascinating concept entirely. I think that, I mean, as always, has just, again, did a fantastic job of all the armour plating. Especially in twirling the whole pangolin part of it. It looks really, really effective. And the way it's kind of crouched over like that, with the eyes pitch black looking to the viewer, it looks like it's really getting ready to jump out and strike. And I think it looks quite intimidating and really effective. And next up, by Viking Leo, we have the scaly breasted Lorikeet Kaiju. The texturing on this is absolutely beautiful. I really, really love how just every individual scale just has a bit of attention poured into it, whether it's like the lighting outline or just different hues of colors in the greens and yellows. It looks very, very rich, very stunning. The face as well, especially around the eyes, again, just all the little intertwinement of yellow and green, again, just look really, really beautiful. The subtle bits of white outline just around everywhere on the face, especially around the beak, it just gives it like such a nice extra dynamic. And I'd say that my overall favourite part about this creature is just how vibrant the colour scheme is. I think Viking Leo is an absolutely fantastic job at just playing with colours and it really makes it just pop out the page. Also, a little subtle touch, I also like the bands of yellow around the neck. And next up by Ari Hell now 444 is a Shin Gojira, Zenojiva, and a Pangolin. 
Zero Jeep is a fantastic one to see in Twendedness, also along with Shin Godzilla, that's a hell of a contrast. And I also just really love all the pangolin features on this, especially on the tail. The face is very striking, especially the eyes. And I absolutely adore just all the plating that just adorns the entire creature. It makes for a really fascinating design to look at, and I just love how everything kind of crosses over together. Really stunning work. And for our last one for today, but definitely not least, we have Lantern with our Pale Lumo, Dove Pigeon, and Cloverfield Monster, nicknamed the Avian Mist. This large beast lumbers along uprooting trees to form its nest. Its main habitat is mountainous areas, preferably with a large lake nearby. I absolutely love the idea of Pale Lumo and Cloverfield, two very large, pale looking creatures with sinister looking faces. That's a really, really cool combination. I also just love how Lantern's added in the little uh, patterning, the little spheres and circles from Palumo into the wings of the creature. And also how the wings are somewhat claw-like, reminiscent of that of the Cloverfield monster. N not the wings of course, but the arms and the hands. And the face is just as terrifying as you'd imagine from a combination of all three creatures. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It's another very solid looking design. Right then, and that's what we have for now then. Come back next week where we conclude with part two of the rest of the submissions. Absolutely beautiful variety and it's really fascinating just seeing everyone's much more diverse and varying ideas and how they all come together and how varied these all look. It just looks absolutely wonderful. As always, if you'd like to take part as well, you can submit your artwork via either my Discord server, you can email it to me directly, you can reply with it to the comment section down below, or you can message me on Twitter and DeviantArt, anywhere that you can find me and I shall see it. As always, thank you all so very much and I hope you'll have a wonderful day. Cheers.